Dear colleague, welcome to this lecture on how to shorten the time for a DBS procedure. DBS can and is being done in many different ways, many equally good and some probably not so good. In this lecture I will focus on one aspect which might be of importance, that is how we can increase the speed of the procedure. I have been asked to make this lecture since I'm performing the surgical part of the procedure in a relatively short time. Typically I will do the complete implantation from skin to skin including the IPG in 60 minutes in unilateral surgery but occasionally under 50 minutes. A bilateral procedure will normally add half an hour. This does of course not include the mounting of the frame or calculations of coordinates. How we do the procedure at my department has developed over time, but it is based on our experience from 1400 DBS implantations in Umeå and in London. To see the details of the implantation procedure, please consult this lecture on implanting a DBS system. Let's start with a few general principles which are common to all of us before we proceed. If you find these to be self-evident or too abstract, then just fast forward to the more practical suggestions. All things equal, fast DBS is preferable to slow DBS, since a prolonged procedure will lead to an increased risk for infections, as well as of CSF leakage with brain shift, which might decrease the accuracy of the electrode placement. Further, the cost of OR time is very high and lost time means lost opportunities, perhaps the opportunity of making two DBS implantations a day instead of only one. Of course, not all things are equal. Often we will spend more time in order to achieve a better result, and we should only strive to reduce the time when this results in a net gain. I believe that the easiest manner to achieve this might simply be to strive after perfection rather than after shortening the time. We might not agree on how every detail should be done, but all of us do probably have a personal opinion on this and on what perfection looks like. I believe that by striving for perfection in every detail we will in the end save much time. Sloppiness will not only lead to a poor outcome, additional time consumption to correct mistakes, but also in itself result in lowering the maximal speed of the procedure. A sloppy framework will due to a high flexibility regarding the various parameters be less straightforward than a more rigid framework, leading to time waste. A DBS procedure consists of many individual components, and in order to achieve to decide how time can be saved, you need to deconstruct the procedure into its tiniest components. Just to make one example, let's say that you in a certain moment realize that you need a particular instrument. You then ask the OR nurse, she looks over the table to identify it, she then hands it to you in your right hand, and then you move it to your left hand. Imagine now that you instead told the nurse slightly before you needed it and she knows exactly where the object is, and you take it with your left hand. A simple thing like this might thus be improved and shortened into a fraction of the initial time, and this can be applied to most of the different parts of the procedure. The power of accumulated minor improvements will have a major effect on the length of the procedure. This can of course be applied to all forms of surgery, or for that matter to much of life itself. However, it is unusually easy in stereotactic functional neurosurgery, since this is already initially a very homogeneous procedure. Try to create a workflow where you do everything in exactly the same manner in all patients. Eliminate unnecessary objects, persons and components. Just to give one example, we are using a dedicated toolkit for DBS where we have removed all the unnecessary tools. This is done in order to provide the OR nurse with a better overview. Remember that it's not all about the surgeon, but you need to optimize the workflow also with consideration to the other participants and of course mainly the OR nurse. 
Perhaps more time can be saved if you reverse the order of two components of the procedure in what is for you a less optimal manner, if this is more optimal for the OR nurse. So let us now continue with some practical tips and tricks at the same time. The single change which has saved us the most time was when we converted our awake procedures to a sleep image guided and image verified surgery. Several parts of the procedure uh, is faster in general anesthesia. Most importantly, we don't have a tired, nervous, pain affected patient who need to be calmed, drink, pee, change position, receive support or medication. We have no macro stimulation or MER, and the implantation of extension cable and IPG can be done directly without removing the frame, which saves a lot of time. Since more than 10 years, we are doing all procedures, including essential tremor, in full anesthesia. And there are also other advantages than the time, but if you would like to have more information on this, please consult this lecture on our website. Another suggestion is to prepare the electrode before the actual operation has started, perhaps while someone, someone else is doing the dressing, and don't spend time on this during the procedure itself. At surgery, it is of course most convenient to shave the whole head. A straight incision is faster than a skin flap, especially when closing the wound and has, in our experience, no other disadvantages. Place the burr hole exactly where it should be, well centered around the planned trajectory of the electrode, so you don't have to spend time on adapting it later. Sometimes we will need to enlarge the burr hole to fit the anchoring device. This can often be avoided by using a burr of a wider diameter. To perform the durotomy and corticotomy with monopolar diathermia in the manner seen here is fast and will provide you with a well-centered opening. The DBS electrode can, as you know, be implanted using a cannula. But especially the removal of the cannula will add several minutes to the procedure. A much faster way is to make a channel for the DBS electrode uh, by using a radio frequency electrode, as we see in this video. When you introduce the DBS electrode, this will follow the preformed channel and it will not deviate from this. This is the method which we have used in about 1400 DBS implantations without problems. When implanting the electrode in this manner, the dura will typically not be opened for more than two minutes before the electrode is implanted and the opening closed with tissue glue. To make the electrode implantation awake, and then to remove the dressing and the frame, and then to sedate the patient before dressing the patient again for the implantation of the IPG and connection cable, will take a very long time. If the procedure is done with the patient asleep, we can just continue with the implantation of the IPG and connection cable immediately after the electrode is in place, without the need for new dressings or removal of the frame. I know that some colleagues believe that tunnelation of the extension cable with the frame in place might be difficult, but in reality it is actually rather simple as you see in this video. And often it is faster to use a big clamp for the tunnelation of the tube from the incision behind the ear to the skull incision rather than using the tunnelation tool. So this was a few of my personal thoughts on how one might increase the speed of the DBS procedure, and I hope that some of them were of interest.
If something was not clear, then please consult the more detailed lectures on surgical technique and the sleep surgery on the website. Thank you for your attention.